with the name, state, role, and value of controls throughout our site. So, just to break that down, name. What is the name of the object? What, you know, if it's a button, what is the, the text inside the button? Give the accessible name of that. State, what is it doing? Um, if it's a checkbox, if it's a check, or a check. Role, what is it? What purpose does it serve in there? For instance, if it's a button, it should be called a button. If it's a slider, it should be, you know, value. Now this depends on the object. I just mentioned sliders. So when we're using a slider, we're going to want to make sure that we value whatever that slider is sliding to or from, the min value, the max value, and the current value are all passed along to users of assistive technology so they can understand what's going on and what the current value is. So depending on the object, you may or may not have to expose the value. It's also been called accessibility identity. Accessibility listed by the usability page. Jared from Webbing wrote an amazing article about that. It's also been called a band-aid solution. Uh, I like to think of it as these um, powerful nanobots that we're going to use and inject into our code. Uh, you guys are these surgeons you see on the wall here. And what you're going to do is you're going to put these nanobots into your wimpy, frail code um, to inject it and to make like this super site out of it. And what you're going to do is, at the end of that, you're going to have this semantically strong, super powerful site that can communicate with ATs in ways that normal HTML cannot do. So when do you do so? You want to answer that question from the next slide? When do we use ARIA? Always. Exactly wrong. No. Um, <laughs> HTML Draft says, if you can use a native HTML element, blah, 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 basically, don't use it unless you have to. If something already exists, that does that job, you use that. Otherwise, if you need to use ARIA to fill in those gaps, then do it. ARIA is supposed to be that gap filler. It's not supposed to be the thing that you're going to use. It's, it's not the, the, the sugar packet you put under the table to make it less wobbly when you can just do it for the leg. So we use it in case of emergency. Um, we use it, like I just said, when there's nothing else we can do, we use ARIA. So I asked Dwayne Rock Johnson what he thought, and he said, know your role. <laughs> you might not have been talking about ARIA, I don't know, but it implied. Unfortunately, role equals accessible does not exist. If it did, we could just slap that on our body and we'd be done. That came out wrong. Don't slap role equals accessible on your body and your house. <laughs> Unless that's your thing. Um, of course, yeah, until then we find a way to make that work with existing APIs, we're probably going to have to do things a little bit more structured out. So let's take a look at landmark roles. What do they do? We've all, raise your hand if you know about landmark roles already, so I can just blast through this stuff. If you don't, that's cool. All right. So landmark roles we're going to inject into uh, our code, and we're going to use those again to strengthen and help people identify key areas of our site. Why do we do this when we already have semantic HTML5 things that basically do the same job? Users of assistive technology can actually navigate their, our sites based on landmarks, or I think now Jaws refers to them as regions. So they can navigate our sites the same way that they would navigate, you know, headings or anything else. They can do that based on our landmarks. So they provide a consistent method to program to identify on the uh, regions. We're talking about that. So what are the landmarks? We've got application, banner, complementary, content info, form, main, navigation, and search. Those mostly make sense. Um, the only one that's really kind of stupid is content info. That's what we put in the footer because obviously footer would be way too semantic to a landmark role. Um, so let's take a look at how they're used. We've got a nav. We can add role of navigation. Again, nav sort of passes along that role depending on the API and the user. But it's not. We've got already buddy added twice. We've got a main element, again, usually passes along the little main, but it helps to sort of strengthen that relationship or that bond in case um, a lot of older ATs don't recognize these new main and nav sort of HTML5 landmarks. I've got a video here. Um, we can roll the dice on whether or not it's going to work because we all know how well camp and conference Wi Fi works. Um, it's my buddy Leonie Watson. Uh, Oh, we can't just hear it. Alright. Uh, 
Uh, you know, let's skip it. I'll tweet this later. Out later, you guys can check it out. Um, that's gonna blow up. Uh, Okay, yeah, good, because I have I, some screen reader demos I need to show later that are going to be kind of stomped on here. Um, so let's move ahead. All right, so let's look at our element rules. Uh, what is that? What are they trying to do? Uh, well, first of all, we don't see this after all. Uh, 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 that span, roll equals a button, and then uh, click again. Okay. So, what's the AQ going to say when it ends up this span? What's it going to call? It's not going to call anything, it's just having it. So first of all, <laughs> we've created an element that's a button to everybody else except for people using keyboards because they can never actually reach it. But that was just a question that didn't need to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so then, you know, why use that when we can use this, right? That would call the button. Because you know, if it is a button, why not? We already have these elements, they, they exist, why not just use it? And it very, you know, the worst case scenario, if we can't use it, then let's use something like this. We've got span, roll equals button, and we're adding our tab index. How many people here are familiar with tab index? Okay, there are exactly two ways we can use tab index. Two appropriate ways to use tab index. What are they? Um, obviously, a numerical tab index exists, but if you get that, then any guy like me or Denis or anybody that audits sites for a living is going to come to your office and give you a budget in front of all your colleagues. That's the last thing you're going to want. So, yeah, we can do it this way. Worst case scenario, but if we do this, we're going to land on the button. It's going to be called a button. We can land on that to get a tab index. It's identified as a button because of rolling both button. We're going to land on it. And there's two ways we can submit this button. We can hit enter or we can hit spacebar. Now what happens when we hit spacebar? If we're not on a, a clickable element. We scroll. It just scrolls down here. So why does it do this? Because we've given it a world equals button. So now it's a button. We've given it a tab index. The reason why it does this is because Aria is a fucking liar. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to swear, but I don't <laughs> Aria is the friend of yours that is going to pick fights for you that you have to fight. <laughs> He's going to melt off and run away and promise things that you now have to deliver. Just because you've given something a role with Aria doesn't mean that you've actually created that. So now we're on the hook because we've called something a button using a span. We now have to capture all of the common design patterns and key presses that go along with that element. So, like I said, uh, it changes the semantic meaning of an element, but it doesn't actually do anything. You're still on the hook to provide any kind of uh, JQuery or uh, JavaScript functions that go along with it. So, you know, you're still on the hook for focus management, keyboard interaction, all of that. For my next trick, who here likes magic? Of course, we got one. Magicians are creepy at all. Let's make a table disappear. How do you think we do this? Magic, I just told you, right? No. Um, use world equals presentation. World equals presentation will strip the semantic meaning out of any uh, parent element and required children for that element. So, for instance, if you've got a table based lit, uh, website that's, you know, for some reason you wake up and you've been transported back to like the 90s or the early 2000s and everything around you was made out of tables, use this to get out. Um, it will strip the semantics of the table, so the screen readers will identify them as, you know, it basically just says, you're saying you ignore this. It's just there for looks, much like me. Um, that's a joke, by the way. So it removes the semantics from the element it is on, it also removes the semantics from any required children. So if you're, if you're on a table, you put that rule of on the table, the TRs and TDs are also stripped. So let's look at an example here. We slap this on a table, 
We give a whole equals presentation. Suddenly the TR and the TD, they don't exist anymore. The H2 and the paragraph that are inside this table, they still keep their semantics because they're not required to. Okay, so everything else that's sort of part of that website now exists on its own and it's, it's easier to find. Any questions so far? I'm going to be too fast. Not fast enough. Ah. Okay, well, okay, so this is where we can play around with some roles. How many people have like seen Google directions and things like that where they spit out your information back to you on like a crazy table? It should be a list, but it's a table. So we can we can fire some of this stuff here. We can totally mess with the semantics of a website. We can take this this, this sort of parrot hit that's gonna be wrapped in our directions table. Uh, if you go to roll with group. Basically, what we're saying is, hey, everything between this and this, which is actually supposed to be closed again, but I don't know. Clearly. Uh, anything between these two, these guys are a gang. They roll together. They're a group. They're a posse. Well, equals posse just didn't fit. Um, now we're telling the, the EAT that, hey, this isn't a table anymore. It's a list. Every TR in there, and that's going to be a list item. It's easy to just sort of fall on the wayside here because we've already run with the semantics of the tables, so now we're just looking at basically this side of the one. Do you know what that is? I've given this talk like four or five times now, and nobody's ever told me what this is. It does look like people out there, but no, it's actually. Um, how many people here have gone to university? How many people here have ever heard of a thing called the weed? <laughs> I, I heard it's popular with you kids. I don't know. Um, <laughs> how many people here are familiar with pizza? How many people here are familiar with pizza and the weed? <laughs> Nobody wants to put that like, There's one brave soul. <laughs> you have a crazy friend, right? It's not you. So, Domino's introduced this great online ordering thing a few years ago. And these kids started realizing that they could control their pizza, they could control whatever they wanted by selecting all of these crazy boxes. So they had bought a bag of the weed and they had ingested it somehow. And they started clicking off all of the order, uh, all of the check boxes. And this has nothing to do with talk about them. I just think this is a great story. Um, they started checking off all the check boxes and they realized they had checked none for everything on the pizza. So one of them, probably the least of the weeded ones, um, said, Let's check left beef. So this is the infamous none pizza left beef. <laughs> you guys are all, you just, your Reddit credit just stepped up a whole notch for that one. <laughs> anyway, so what does that have to do with it? Well, additional instructions. So what do we have here? Can you guys see me? When I say what do I have here, do you just say some asshole blocking the view? <laughs> um, we have a data book, right? And we've seen, you know, we've all seen that sort of a format, you know what I mean? And we've probably seen code that looks like this, where it's, you know, you've got your label, which is fine, your input, and then this span underneath our paragraph or another div or whatever else, it's telling us what the format is. That's great for anybody that can see that isn't using assistive technology. The problem is that that information is really important for somebody who's using a screen reader, but they'll never, ever, ever get that information. We can solve that really, really easily with our handy dandy friend already described. But what we're going to do is we're going to give an ID for this span, and we're going to basically tell the input when you land on there, hey, you've got your label, which is great. It says date, but you're also now described by this ID. And then down here we have the correct format of public lot. So we can now pass this information along really simply to any user. Now, I have examples of this, but how are we doing with speakers? I don't know. I've got it over the hill, so you go to the PG. We'll go back to your speakers with PG. If you're done? Um, uh, you know what? We'll wait till we get a video. Yeah, or we can huddle around the table and I can show you the video. Okay. So, what's going to happen now? Now, one thing I should warn you, though, is um, depending on your settings for Safari, sometimes um, describe by an R and label by uh, their. And now it says help text, so there's a bit of a, a, a wait um, before the screen reader will announce it. But that's really an AT issue, that's something you have to be worried about, just so for testing your code, uh, be prepared that you might not hear it right away. Kind of, like, you really are used um, 
voiceover on the Macs before. Okay. So, you know, when you're playing with something, sometimes if you stay on an element for a while, it'll say, you are on a blah, 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 inside a blah, blah, blah. It'll say that, and it'll also say, the help text is, and then it'll do that. That's something you can change in your settings, the, the gap of time it takes before it announces those. I added this just as some, uh, a bit of a warning. This might be fixed now. I haven't taken the time to really uh, bother testing it, but we put a tab index negative one on here, even though we don't want it to be focusable, and even though it's not really even a focusable element. We removed it from the tab board, but we gave it a tab index because it used to be this weird ID bug. Of course, it's always an ID, ID bug, right? When I was a bug, it's not. Um, it used to be a weird bug that it wouldn't allow uh, describe by or label by on elements that weren't natively focusable, so we just kind of added that tab index just to check it. You probably don't have to do that anymore, but it's just something, one of those things you can do. You can get used to doing it forever. Um, then we've got our little required thing up the top there. So just um, the last one, we've seen those all the time, right? We could easily give that ARIA required plus true. More false, and then couldn't hear the false. My false, you just have not had that ARIA required. But it's a good thing to throw that on there for any required fields because it just announces it that much quicker. Um, believe it or not, blind people don't always know what date star means. Who here has ever made a mistake? And if you say coming to this talk, I'll keep your hand. So. <laughs> At least don't say to me. Um, okay, so let's look at error handling. We've all seen this sort of submission form before, right? We can use ARIA invalid on any fields that require validation as we go. So, <laughs> just going to fix your audio thing. Sorry. It's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, thank you. So, uh, so, for ARIA invalid, really, it's not just Boolean. I mean, we can have true or false, but there are other actual um, validations we can run on that. But I mean, really, we don't we don't mess around with too many of the values. But you can actually check it for grammar. But again, with ARIA, you can say, yeah, uh, it's invalid for grammar. But then you have to write the script that checks that, and that's what you me. Um, same with spelling. So I mean, a lot of the time, you're just going to have true or false. You know, does it meet the criteria? No. So, now let's see how we're going to handle these errors. Um, it's pretty easy. We've got ARIA required equals true. So yeah, we want the surname to be required. ARIA valid. We've got spelling on this because we've public manager. Because, you know, it's really easy to check the spelling on some of the things. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the argument. So that's really just how we do it. So basically, uh, it runs that. It runs through whatever JavaScript you have in place to validate it, and then it spits out the error. But the really fun part is associating these errors with the controls. When we go back to our new best friend, our new describe line. Again, we've given the div that contains our error to be a paragraph that you spent, you know, whatever you want. We've given that an ID, and we've referenced the error now. That'll pop up when something's invalid. We'll add this already described by this JavaScript, certain queue. So now when they go back to that error, they'll hear. Certain uh, already valid spelling, and then it will say your survey must start with the error. So now we've bound this error message to the input, so it's a little easier to put it on the fix. We're almost there. Not the end of the talk, unfortunately, but we're almost at the point where our where our forms are going to make sense, where our error handling is perfect. What we really want, though, is to create this list at the top. How many people have seen this at the top of the form when they submit something and they see this here? You, know, you contain X many errors. Uh, so, how we would do this is really, really simple. First thing we want to do when we kick that error, we want to kick them back up to this error. We're going to use that, we're going to use tab index uh, negative one for that. We're going to assign focus to our div that contains our error. It's got a roll of proof, so it does all of this together. Because we're assigning focus right to this div, we need to label it. So we're going to label it using our H2 here. Okay, so what the first thing they're going to hear when they land back on the page is your information contains two values. 
So now they know, okay, I found something, I've arrived at the thing that's telling me that. From that, they could tap down. And the first thing they go ahead, if you can tap the land on this thing, you know, we've moved all the third lists of errors together because they're actually take it one step further, you can make each of these uh, errors, or just one for the error messages, you make that a link that will jump right to the input. So, when they land on that, they'll land on a list of two items. Now they know they have two errors in that list. First one, phone number two is a required field. So they can hit that, jump down, and fix it. Now, they can search if you're really, really good at JavaScript, you can follow the, don't let all the other fields, or disable all the other fields, and then have them just jump down right down to the next error. That's if you really want to end points from your boss. Any questions on this so far? How do people see these guys? Modals, dialogues, pop-ups, whatever, you, whatever they're called this week that you're changing names. Now, I mean, more specifically, how many people have seen this exact, what's going on in the page here, where you've got your modal, but then underneath you've got your, your focus, your hands sort of moving around, and you're really moving cursor. So let's look at how we handle dialogues. When we open them, programmatic focus must be moved to that new dialog. Uh, these new elements, they must have their appropriate roles. That's really easy to figure out. Does the dialog uh, collect data? Do, 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 does the user have to interact with it in any way? Do they submit something? Do they, do they type it? Yes, then it gets a role of dialog. Is it purely there just to tell them something is wrong or you know, provide information, but all they need to do is just click the button afterwards? Then you want to give it a role of alert dialog. Then the criteria for the dialog, uh, it's the following attributes. They get already labeled by and they might get already described by depending on what the, um, the purpose of the dialogue is. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. Start with the content, uh, 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 an alert dialogue. So basically, we've all seen this, you know, it's like, okay, here's a, a list of instructions that you need to do right away. Um, this happens, like, um, so we've got our shutdown instructions. So basically, again, we're, we're assigning program, uh, Focus to this using tab index negative one. It's got a role of alert dialog. When they land on it, it's got ARIA labeled by the title, which is the shutdown instructions. It's got ARIA described by the instructions afterwards, which is this sort of list, which is this stuff here. And basically what's going to happen is once this focus is moved to this dialog, all of this is going to get read out. So they don't have to do anything to get this information. Next tab stop is going to be the OK button. So they can submit, confirm their error, it's closed, and then perfect, right? Any questions there? Is that really perfect? Well, perfect. Well, so there's no, yeah, perfect. Let's take a look at um, a regular old dialog. We, you know, I'm, I'm just using a really simple form. Um, sign up to newsletter. So it's, it's sort of the same thing. Um, Oops, the tab is on the wrong element there. Pretend I put it up there. I was doing this case this morning. Um, so we have role equals dialog. Are labeled by it. Again, the title tab index should be up here on, on the div. So when you land on it, the focus is set there. <coughs> Again, all of that is announced. Then they can tap down, and now they're in forms mode. They'll be told, okay, enter your email address. And hit the sign up button, and then again. Obviously, depending on what's in that mode. Will change what's in the guts, but these are the two things you want to take note of, and you want to be content of that never happened. So changes. When stuff happens on the screen. We use libraries. So what are libraries? Does anybody know what libraries are? Yes. So, <laughs> um, they basically allow the user to know when content changes on the screen. It doesn't actually have to be in an area where they currently are or have focus on. It could be something in the top, you know, top part of the screen. Uh, and that's it. Uh, basically, it's for any content that changes dynamically. So that they're not requesting that change. It's just happening on the plug. So where do we use them? 
all over the place. You use uh, chats, error locks, status messages, urgent messages, stock tickers, high risk clocks, progress indicators, anywhere on your screen where content is continually updating that the user doesn't control. And we do this with ARIA Live. So, first thing we have to ask ourselves is how important to us, or to the user rather, is this content? Is it not too important? Then we use ARIA Live. It basically waits for the user to stop whatever they're doing, and then it says, oh, by the way, sir, you missed this, or this happened. It's probably the default for most of the roles we're going to talk about in a second. If it's something like, oh my, FG, we need this, like now, we're going to use ARIA Live, then we're going to give it the assertive value. They changed that, which really sucks, because it used to be called rude, which was probably the funnest <laughs> thing you could ever program, is telling your code to be rude. Um, and that basically interrupts whatever the user is doing and just starts yelling at them. You can think of all the different ways you can get in trouble with that. So we have to give these uh, libraries roles, because we need to tell somebody when something's announced, like, what is this thing that you yelled at? So for chats, error logs, whatever else, we give it a role of log. Status messages, that's pretty self-explanatory. Urgent messages, uh, we give it a role of alert. Stock tickers, more equals marquee, timers clock, more equals timer, progress indicator, progress bar. And if it doesn't fit for any of them, if it's just a thing, give it a role of region, because then at least they know that it's something. And then you can take it one step further and use like ARIA labels or something and give it your own name. Any questions so far? Yeah. Will the change to the sort of side effects of the apps? I don't know for sure. I don't think ARIA was really supported enough uh, for it to really matter. But, um, you probably won't see a lot of people using it really again. I think the support for ARIA Live wasn't there yet. Zero. So. I wish it would come back though. So, this is the cell work. You got this working? So here's a funny story about the cell. Last time we were talking about um, all of the different types of sites that adults might want to use that should be accessible. So anybody mind if I drift into adult territory here for a second? We're all adults here, right? We can have us. Talk about YouTube loop. Um, so I, we were talking about adult websites. And I said, well, there is an adult website out there for blind people. It's called corporateblind.org. And basically, it's a, an audio description. It says that we've been talking on this. It's funny because you're laughing. Um, it, it's basically an audio description of whatever uh, you know, whatever's going on on the screen. Somebody has volunteered to describe it. It's usually like the least sexual sounding person ever describing a site. <laughs> um, so I told Jordan, pick a number between one and whatever. He picked a number, and the title of that link happened to be Big Sausage Pizza. A lot of pizza references today. <laughs> so we were listening to it, and we thought it was kind of funny, because just some bored university student saying, the screen has this and this. The man has a pizza box on his lap. You can take the rest of the um, So we all laughed. I, I closed my iPhone. I said, see, that's easy. I put it in my phone. What are we doing? Today I'm waiting for two to pick me up, and I'm like, oh shit. So I'm sitting in the restaurant at the hotel, and I open my phone, but the volume still cranked. <laughs> Porn for the Blind presents Big Sausage Pizza. <laughs> yeah, so you can imagine. The lady beside me, I throw almost choked her wall. <laughs> poor old lady, like, she's just like, Ooh. Yeah, anyway, so. That's my story for today. So this is like a... Or, not or, or, because it's a professional organization. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's not awful. Um, side note, if you give your phone to Jenison with that side open, you won't get it back. You'll have to wrestle it from his back. If you don't know Jenison, it's not funny, but just trust me. It's a <laughs> um, all right, you want to click that button for me? I'm going to have to crank the volume first. You got it cranked? Yeah. Right. Should get the volume on. That's weird. Alright. Nothing. 
voiceover on Safari. Live regions, window. Live regions, HTML content has keyboard focus. Six, seven, eight. Okay, awesome. So you heard the, the number updating as we're... As we're you are currently on HTML content. To that, enter actually, that area doesn't actually have focus right on. now, right? So we're using, um, we're using a button here just to run some group JavaScript to, to update the number. And up in this empty div, we have our live region. So aria live equals polite, it's a role of status. And basically what's happening is it's waiting for us. So if you hit that button a bunch of times, it shouldn't do anything. Voice over on Safari, live regions, window, live regions, HTML content has keyboard choice, 20. That's how much time? Okay. 27. So here I didn't interrupt every time. It basically let you finish what you're doing. And then it politely said, You are currently on HTML content. To enter the web app, mute it. <laughs> Any questions on that one? I included the crude script. I'm going to tweak this slide deck later, so if you want to steal some of these examples and, and muck about it, you guys are probably way better developers than I am, so you can probably do some great stuff with this. So, we know we can announce stuff. That's awesome. But what do we announce? What do we want to announce? This is where we have our option. We can use Atari Atomic, which is great. It determines, um, basically, if we have a string of text, we have a live region that only some of it updates, we can, we can decide whether we want to announce the entire string or just part of it. Values are true or false. Set the false by default, so it will only announce um, what updates. We don't want to blow everything up. It's a huge string of text. We don't need to tell everybody that you know, this whole thing is happening. We just need to update one part of it. Then we also have ARIA relevant. Uh, it's sort of a, a little bit more deep version, so the um, So in that we can basically, I'm going to speed through a lot of this stuff, it doesn't matter, but uh, we can announce um, additions, removals, text, or all. I think by default is set to um, additions and text, that's the best thing you can sort of string things together depending on what you want to do. So let's listen to what ARIA Atomic sounds like. So this is false. So when we click that, we should only hear regions, window, live regions, HTML content has keyword focus, score, two, three. Okay. Well, let's go down here to the um, atomic. Score, one. Score, two. Do you hear how it's announcing this, the whole string? So I mean, that could be any amount of text in there. Two, live regions, less than div. Well, oh, by the way, this whole site is based on live regions. That's why we're here to announce it. Two. So, again, we do this up here. We've got um, role status, are you live, polite, are you atomic pulse. Um, it could be true. Then we've got this sort of, uh, so this whole div here is our live region. But the part that actually only gets update is this span inside. So, using are atomic true or false dictates how much of that string actually gets read. So, as I promised, this talk did not teach you anything. Uh, hopefully it gave you enough of an understanding of what ARIA can do that you can sort of seek out the rest of it and then see if you did it. My ultimate goal was that it dumbed it down enough to show you that it's really not that difficult than anything else or it's not that different than anything else you're already doing. So it didn't teach you anything. But hopefully you do know a few things now. But there is a lot more to ARIA than what I showed you here. I mean, I just got into the, the most basics that you probably see all the time. There's a lot of stuff around tabs and things like that that you can see now. And this talk was very, very, very vanilla. And arguably, it was just the type of the vanilla iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just let this sink in. <laughs> it's forever to get the transparent. Got beside me on the things. You do it, man. You get paid for it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Dad. Um, <laughs> but I want you to know that ARIA really is there for when we need it. It might not be the answer that we were hoping for with HTML5 and everything else, but it's there to stop the crimes that we're committing with our keyboards. With that, any questions? Otherwise, thank you very much. What's that? Do you want to go back to Leo's video? Do you guys want to see the only surfing via landmarks, or do you want to just, yeah, sorry. Okay. Well, any questions? Yeah.
Uh, you mentioned like uh, not to use ARIA when like there's HTML5 elements that you need. Was it was that ever the intention of like ARIA getting baked into HTML5 eventually completely? I guess the idea behind ARIA was to sort of bridge the gap between SHTML and HTML5. There's a lot of expectations that HTML5 would solve the need for ARIA. But then a lot of the browsers fell short in implementing a lot of the accessibility that was required. And it just, ARIA sort of took on this, its whole life and they started solving problems that HTML just isn't meant to solve, like things like dialogues and things like that. Um, so it sort of outgrew its original purpose um, of being sort of the stopgap measure and became this required uh, tool for the tool set, rather. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, it's now sort of taken on a lot of its own. So I don't think it's ever, it's not going to go on. Uh, HTML5 will probably get better at what they're doing, and, should, you know, and, and generally, you know, maybe over time, strip back some of the, you know, ARIA attributes and roles that we're using, but there's a huge, I mean, it's like this, imagine like a slinky, so I mean, the, the browsers might implement something and the APIs behind that and something else. So I mean, there's this whole inchworm effect that has to happen in order for somebody using a screen reader at the end of the day to be able to get away from ARIA. So we're going to be using it, but we'll see in the future. Okay. You mentioned um, the role of the tool. Mm -hmm. How is that uh, seen by screen readers? Like some other uh, ones are like just said no to whatever but the... Yeah, well actually, if, if you haven't given like a label to something, I'll just say group. Okay. Yeah. Which, I mean, can be helpful in some situations, right? Because if you've got sort of a, a group of controls, at least you know they're all bound together. Like, otherwise, if you don't have a group on something and it's just control, 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 you might not realize that they're all for the same thing. Kind of not that. Do you see it used for um, HTML5 elements that are not yeah, recognize with browsers, like the figure and the DKs and things like that? It really depends on what you're building. Um, again, you don't want to overuse ARIA. I mean, a role of group isn't the most semantic thing to use, so you wouldn't want to overuse it. It's really just in case of emergency. So, like when I was changing the semantics of that table, I wanted to put group in there just so they knew that they were sort of stumbling into some weird foreign territory. Uh, Ideally, what you probably want to do is include like this more like an ARIA label or just scrap by or something so they understand that, hey, you're in this thing and it's called this, and it's sort of helping you find the group. So, for, for like, elements that are not recognized by browsers, like, uh, shouldn't. Like, well, what elements do you. Figure, for example, and then you put inside the figure an image and description of the image, and then you wrap, they are already one, one thing inside the figure. Uh, or details uh, elements with the summary and then? With something like a figure, you probably wouldn't need to use more of this group because you could use like, you could use a describe by or something like that to sort of, especially if the text is always somewhere else on the page, you can just reference that. So that's where, really if I was to pick my favorite or my go-to RA, it would be RA describe by because you can solve a lot of the common issues you're going to have on the page which is that. Is that something that you could you would use? Is there a use case for that in new applications? Um, I've seen people use it unnecessarily on things like images or this. Um, maybe if there was sort of something that spit out as a list that wasn't necessarily needed to be a list or um, I've seen it, but I, I don't. I think it's really more passive. That's right. All right. Well, thank you again, Billy. Thank you. All right, another thank you. round of applause. So lunch will be downstairs.